it's Madison from Seattle Coffee Gear, and today I'm here to go over some common pour over mistakes, as well as go ahead and brew a pour over for y'all. I want you to see how I do it at home, and kind of during the process, I'll call out some opportunities uh, where you can make a mistake. So let's brew one together, and I will uh, show you how I do it. So here we go. Um, one thing that you're, one common pour over mistake is not having the proper dose of coffee uh, to your ratio of water. So I recommend sticking to that 16 to one ratio. It's, it's a standard recipe. It's the one that I use every day. Um, I like the way that the, the coffee comes out when you brew it um, 16 parts water to one part coffee. So that's what I'm gonna do here today. Um, I'm gonna go with a, a larger size because I might want to share some of this coffee later. So here we go. Um, I'm gonna do 40 grams of whole beans here. Uh, we're 40.4. I like to add a a tenth or two of a gram to my um, dose, just in case some of it gets caught in the grinder. It's kind of my, uh, it's just my habit. Another common pour over mistake is an, an improper grind size. Um, you really want your grind of your coffee to be a little bit coarser than, than you would for like a automatic drip brewer. Uh, if you have a Barazza grinder, I, re I recommend checking out their website. They have some really good resources on uh, starting points for, for grind size. Uh, but today I'm going to be using the Barazza Virtuoso Plus. And I have it set on, it's about 17. And that's what I really like. Um, you can kind of play around with that, but 17 is where I, where I start. So I'm going to go ahead and grind these beans. Almost there. Okay. Now the next kind of common thing that can happen uh, when you're brewing a pour over is your water temperature not quite exactly where you need it to be. So it's important to be in that uh, SCA kind of golden range of 195 to about 205. Um, now, if you're if you're doing a pour over or brewing a pour over with some lighter roasted coffee. Generally speaking, I think that you should have a little bit hotter water. And if you're doing something that's a little bit darker roasted, you can be closer to that uh, 195 range. So uh, I encourage you to, to play around with that and see. And see. All right, another tip that I wanna share, uh, something that you, know, you can forget if you're brewing pour over is to rinse your filter uh, before you brew. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, what this will do is kind of wash away any papery taste that you might have in your, um, your coffee. I don't know if you've ever brewed before and you have some kind of unpleasant flavors. Maybe you forgot to rinse your filter. Rinsing your filter is also good too, because, um, especially with like a porcelain dripper like this, we're introducing a little bit of heat to that dripper. So it's gonna kind of heat it up a little bit, uh, which is always good. And we're also heating up our server too. So we have this, this hot water. Let's go ahead and not waste it. I'm gonna take um, the hot water that I use to rinse my filter. And I'm gonna let my drinking vessel warm up too. Why not? We'll use that water. All right, so I've got my scale teared out here back to zero. 
let's take our coffee and load it into the dripper. And we can make sure that our ratios is right. Um, so I'm, I'm all zeroed out here. Let's add the coffee. All right, uh, so we're right at 40 grams, which is great. That's where I want to be. I like to do 40 grams for like my bigger, my bigger servings. Um, usually, you know, in those mornings where you want to have one cup of coffee and then another cup a little bit later, um, 40, 40 ounce uh, or 40 grams of beans is a good recipe for that. Um, another thing that I would recommend doing is here we've got a nice flat grounds bed, right? I'm going to add just a little bit of a divot in the middle here. I'm going to use my finger and I'm just going to make like a little, just like a little, um, almost like a little crater in that, um, in that grounds bed. And that's going to help me make sure that when I'm blooming the coffee, you know, that first 30 seconds of the brew time, that it's really kind of saturating as much of those grounds as possible. Cause that's another <clears throat> common pour over mistake is that you're not um, saturating all the grounds of coffee as best as you can. Um, so let's go ahead and start this brew and I will kind of show you more what I'm talking about. So I'm going to tear it yet again. So we have zero grams of weight or zero on the timer. Like I mentioned, I do a 16 to one ratio. So we have 40 grams of coffee here. I'm going to pour over 640 grams of water and it's a little bit well, around 20 ounces. So here we go. All right, so we're in the bloom phase. We're getting close to that 30 second mark. You might notice that I doubled the weight of the coffee in water for that bloom. So we're at 80 grams. I usually let it bloom anywhere from 30 to 45 seconds. So we're at 36, let's, let's start pouring again at 40. Now at this stage of the pour over, one mistake that can happen pretty easily is, you know, you might notice here I'm, I'm kind of swirling this brew. If you get your swirl going with your, uh, with your gooseneck kettle and you focus too much on the sides of the dripper, uh, so you're not directing the flow kind of right in the center here, what you're gonna end up doing is some of that water is gonna go right down the sides of the dripper and not spend enough time uh, with the coffee here in the dripper. So make sure when you're pouring, it stays somewhat in the middle. Another thing too, uh, make sure you're stirring your slurry. I think right after the first pulse, at least for me, that's when I like to do it. And we have some more water to add. So I'm swirling just to kind of, I'm, I'm stirring all that coffee up. I like to, uh, you know, just make sure that I'm getting as much of that ground coffee covered in water as I can. I'm getting close here to the end. Well, I want to stop right at 640. Almost there. All right. So it's important, like I said, make sure all that those that all the the ground coffee is saturated with water. At this point in the brew, too, I like to let the water kind of draw down a little bit, and once it gets to about roughly halfway full in the stripper. I like to pick it up and give it a little twirl, or swirl, whichever. And I'll show you why I did that too. 
And this is a, a little bit longer of a brew time than you might expect with a V60. And it's just, a, it's a large dose. Um, so it's gonna be three, three minutes or so. You know, that might change uh, depending on what you do for your bloom too. So say you have a really long bloom time, uh, it's gonna affect uh, your total brew time. But there we go, we're just about, just about done. And like I said, I'm gonna show you why I swirled my dripper. Got a nice flat grounds bed. Um, and to me, that's a sign that this is well extracted. Uh, if there was, if you didn't, you know, swirl or stir or properly agitate um, the coffee, you might see your grounds bed, it might look um, mountainous, you know, it might have different mounds and uh, it might look a bit messy, I guess. Um, that's going to be signs of like channeling, you know, where there's uh, the water kind of raced through certain parts of the, of the coffee um, and it didn't spend enough time uh, with all the grounds. So, you know, a nice flat grounds bed is a good sign. It means, hey, it's pretty evenly extracted. But here we go. Let's, let's taste this coffee. Uh, I'm gonna dump out my hot water here. Time to enjoy the brew. I like to put the uh, top back on that server just for heat retention. These things actually uh, keep the coffee hot for longer than longer than you might expect. Here we go. Tastes good to me. It's the recipe I like. Mm. I'd, I'd say it's nice and uh, the strength in the body is kind of really what I'm looking for. Um, I'm a big filter or drip coffee fan myself, so I like kind of that, that body that you get um, in a filter brew. Uh, but I would say that this one also has some some sweetness to it too, some very natural sweetness. Um, virtually no bitterness, for real. Tastes really good. I like it. Um, but yeah, that's that's my common pour over mistakes. If you have any questions, let us know down below, uh, or give us a call. We'll be happy to chat with you and um, talk coffee. Well, thanks again. Okay. Yes.